Hey guys, it's Mark from Migraine Professional. I used to suffer from migraines and headaches until about five years ago when I figured out how to beat them and I've been migraine free ever since. Now I teach other people how to do the same. And in this video, we're going to be talk, we're, we're going to sort of talk about how to understand the causes of visual, optical, and ocular aura migraines. Now, a my, an aura is a stage of the migraine. There are four stages in migraine. We have our prodrome, our aura, our migraine phase or the attack phase, and we have our postrome, which is known as the, the, the hangover or the, the burnout feeling after. Now, in the second phase, in our aura phase, when we experience visual, optical, ocular, some kind of visual symptoms, that means we are having a visual aura. So, what we want to understand is that the part of our brain, during this process, the part of our brain that processes visual information is migraining. So, what is that? The way we can kind of understand it is through CSD. CSD is cortical spreading depression. And this was a phenomena found in the brain of migraine, migraine with aura sufferers as well as people with epilepsy. And what happens is that basically our brain is going through this, uh, it's called a wave of depolarization, but simply we can understand it as a wave of excitation where all our neurons are firing and then followed by a wave of almost like fatigue or blackout where the neurons go dark, all activity goes dark. So it's excited and it, then it fatigues the cells, the cells all fire, they get fatigued, they get tired out. And then it's, there's a blackout, there's a, a like a dark, a uh, period of darkness there. And so what's kind of happening here is that our neurons are being fatigued they're, they're being overexcited and then they're being fatigued because of this overexcitation and a breakdown in the energy generation of our neurons and the breakdown in the, the sort of inflammatory signaling of our neuron support cells, which are our glial cells, which we don't really need to understand. But what's happening is that they're getting overexcited by stimulus or sort of, it's almost like a, a one little part of the brain starts and it fires, it gets excited by a stimulus, whatever that stimulus may be for you, that's generally known as a trigger. And then that little part of the brain starts firing and it, because the brain is so interconnected, it causes all of these other neurons in the area to fire and all of the ones around them to fire and all, around, all the ones around them to fire. And it creates a ton of overexcitation and then it's followed by fatigue. Now, in a normal healthy cell in the green here, you see that your your neurons, they always have a little bit of activity, but they're, they're always below that threshold, those, that dotted line. Now, what happens is that when there's a stimulus sent to the neuron, the neuron goes above the threshold, the stimulus gives it enough energy to get above the threshold and the neuron fires. It, it sends a message to the next neuron, to the next uh, sort of synapse. And then after that, it gets depleted, it comes back down below this threshold. So it's well below the threshold, it doesn't have a, um, it's not going to accidentally fire. But what happens when your neurons start developing problems creating energy, that the, they start to sort of, they, they get very, very close to this threshold. As you see with the red line, it's very, very close to the threshold. It's just barely riding on that threshold. And when it's given even a tiny little stimulus, which is always happening in the brain because the brain's always processing, if it's given a tiny little stimulus, then it can fire and then it'll come back down. But it, because it's not healthy, it doesn't come back down enough. It stays very close to that threshold. And then it fires again, it can keep firing, it can continue firing, and then it fatigues. So, what we want to understand here is that our, our neurons are getting incredibly excited and our microglia, which are immune cells in the brain that generate, that send inflammatory um, messages and that help deal with oxidation, they are, are overactivated, they're, they're doing too much work and they're creating inflammation in the brain, they're creating what's called neurogenic inflammation, which we don't really need to understand. But what we, want, what we do want to understand is what we can do about it. What can we do about this process of our brain cells fatiguing and then getting overexcited um, and, and sort of burning out and, and creating the, these different problems that we experience as an aura? So we 
Absolutely, we wanna make sure that we uh, down-regulate our immune response, any immune stimulus, any immune um, problems that we have, which means we want, we want, we have to make sure that we deal with any infections we have. The most common are um, our gut infections, parasite infections, dysbiosis, uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, but we also want to make sure we deal with, with things like viral infections, um, especially like low-lying viral infections, things like that. We want to make sure we support our immune system so that our microglial cells are supported. Then we want to deal with our, with our uh, GI, with our gastrointestinal system. We want to make sure that we are not um, developing a leaky gut and that we're healing that leaky gut. Because leaky gut, again, you're, you're, you're allowing molecules that shouldn't be getting through the gut to get through the gut. They can get into the body and then the body's like, what's going on? What's happening? And it starts to attack these particles. It starts to release inflammatory molecules that are that signal to the body that it needs to be attacking here. And then this inflammation that these inflammatory messages can end up in the brain space and they can sensitize the brain. So what happens when the brain gets sensitized is that it starts to overreact. It starts to, it almost gets, um, we get so far into our threshold that everything that gets added to it is exponentially more. So even though a, um, let's say last week you were feeling good, you were healthy and your, your body was doing well, you were well rested, you ate some chocolate, that didn't trigger you, that was fine. But this week you're stressed out, you're under a ton of, of stress, you're missing sleep, your uh, relationships are falling apart, you haven't eaten well, all these things are going on. You're finding that you're constantly being uh, triggered, you're getting headaches and migraines. These little things, like that chocolate can now be exponentially more of a, a trigger and more inflammatory because your body's getting sensitized. So we wanna make sure that we're dealing with GI issues, we're taking out um, any type of inflammation, inflammatory foods, um, we're, we're supporting our body's ability to deal with inflammation. We're also supporting our antioxidant reserves. So our body always needs antioxidants to deal with oxidation and oxidative stress, which is often found, um, which is the, the sort of the connecting, uh, the underlying principle that connects all migraines and uh, migraine triggers is oxidation and too much oxidation, which is kind of, we can kind of understand it as stress. When you cut an apple, it goes brown, that's oxidation. So we wanna make sure that we, we're getting lots of antioxidants through our diet, we're dealing with inflammation, we're not adding inflammation through our diet, through our stressors, through our lifestyle. And then we're optimizing nutritional status. So this is our, our nutritional deficiencies, especially if we have gut problems, we're gonna have nutritional deficiencies. We're gonna, we need to optimize our nutritional status. We need to use nutrition and uh, supplementation through nutrition and diet to actively repair and provide the nutrients that our brain needs to create energy, that it needs to create energy to clean up waste, to, to sort of deal with all of those oxidants that need the antioxidants and make sure that we can sort of uh, fix the problem from the inside as opposed to just uh, continuing kind of stuck on that teeter-totter of, of um, sort of really close to excitation, really close to burnout, really close to too much activity for the brain to handle. So kind of in summary, it's important for us to understand cortical spreading depression, which is like a wave in the for visual or a migraine sufferers, it's a wave in the, the back of the head, in the occipital region, in the visual processing region. Um, it's a wave of, of activity, overexcitation, followed by a blackout um, caused by unhealthy neurons and too much um, immune stimulation to the microglia, which are supporting the neurons. We want to make sure that we're we're reducing immune load on the body. We're we're healing the gut. And that's a massive source of of foreign particles and stress to the body. We're we're always making sure that we're dealing with inflammation. We're lowering inflam inflammation and inflammatory molecules so we can't become sensitized. Our our nervous system can become centrally sensitized, and we're optimizing nutritional status so that our body can repair, recover, clean up waste, build better, stronger brain cells. So let me know in the comments below, how do you experience your, your visual auras or migraines? 
Is it just a simple scotoma? Is it a blur? Does it grow? Does it get smaller? Is it uh, visual snow? Do you only get it before migraines? Do you get it without migraines, without the actual attack? Do you get it during the attacks? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks. Hey, it's Mark from migraineprofessional.com. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner. And if you want to learn more about migraines and headaches than you've ever known before and understand what causes them, what creates them, and what you can do about them, make sure to go to migraineprofessional.com. Thanks.